Let's count the 3D printers, shall we? There's number one, and all the way around the other side of this room, and there is printer number two. Can you have too many 3D printers? I think not. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, August the 9th, 2021, vlog number 228. And I'm Stephen from The Idiot Quilter and Bland Designs, and it is day 516th of COVID. There's a lot of information to start you off with, right? Okay, let's get right into things because I could be interrupted while I'm making this recording because right now it's about 7.36 in the morning, but it between 8 o'clock and 12 o'clock, I'm supposed to be getting an upgrade to my internet service. So uh, if you don't see this come out until Tuesday instead of Monday, that's why, because I was down. But at the moment, I am still up, and so I'll see how far I can get with this before this person who's doing the installation shows up. You know, they give you that window of four hours, so you never know when they're going to come. Okay, so behind me is Tiki Tacky Little Houses. It's all done. You've seen it in pieces before it is now completely layered bound and it is quilted and you probably can't see it on the video very well but i did free motion quilting throughout this whole quilt well that's a little bit of a lie although it is still considered part of free motion quilting i did do some ruler foot quilting in the white spaces the negative spaces here as well the um, free motion quilting is not perfect done is better than perfect and with each thing that I try I get a little better at it. Am I up to doing feathers yet? No I am not but these are squiggly lines that go one way another way and I echo some of the triangles the peaks in the houses. Yes it's all very irregular and that's why I call it the ticky tacky little houses because to me the quilting on this reminds me of basically scribbling in a coloring book um, and I don't know it, it sort of suits it that or that's what I'm telling myself anyways but I am very pleased with the way it turned out the backing has a really cool fabric on it you can't really see the quilting on the backing and I did that on purpose because the backing was so busy to start with and there's a lot of quilting in this quilt it's it's a very heavy quilt who would have thought that a little bit of fabric and a little bit of thread could make something so heavy but it is it is very heavy Okay, so moving on, YouTube channel of the week is called Inside the Supermarket. It's actually a television series that's been on the BBC. I'm not sure when they did it. Well, I know in references to some of the episodes I've watched, they mentioned 2019. So it's maybe a couple of years old now. But it is a series where they look at the inner workings of a modern day supermarket, a big chain supermarket, one that's big in London called Sainsbury and it shows you all the behind the scenes kind of things and well you learn a lot of stuff that i didn't know about supermarkets so here's my review of that uh youtube the channel. youtube channel of the week for this week is one called smiley guy 19 but it is not this particular youtube site that i want to focus on rather i want to focus on one of the shows that he has listed in his playlist and it's called inside the supermarket season one I've just recently started watching this and it is a BBC production where they go inside one of the very large chain supermarkets in England and you get a behind the scenes look at everything that they go through. It's kind of interesting because you know I don't think this is something we often think about. We just think of going into a supermarket and seeing all the produce on the shelves and picking it up and paying for it but this shows you there's a whole lot more that goes into the preparation uh, of the foodstuffs that are on the shelves so if you want to watch something that's both entertaining and informative check out inside the supermarket at smiley guy 19. so you'll find the link for uh what's it called again <laughs> okay mental block inside the supermarket yes let's get back on track here um, it is in another YouTube channel uh, it's one of the playlists in a particular channel so that's why when you go to it you're going to be going to somebody else's channel to find the link uh, to in the supermarket 
Okay, there's also a link for uh, this past week's Idiot Quilter where uh, I called it Bobbins and Boxes and Rings and talk about a variety of things, but I do talk in one part about how I store my thread bobbins. And there's a So Chatty episode called Stupid Sewing Machine Tricks. And I'm going to come to why that's called that in a few moments. Um, and uh, of course, there's a link to this week's Stephen and Walter Live. So that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, I'm not really pissed off. I'm kind of pissed off with myself again. But, well, how do we make a long story sh short? We were attacked by bats. Well, that's a bit dramatic. Um, where we live, we back onto a forest. And there are all kinds of little creatures in the forest, aren't there? And at night, a lot of them come out. And one of those things that comes out are bats. Now these are little brown bats, very common to Canada. They're absolutely harmless. They're just a little tiny flying mouse. They weigh maybe in around two ounces or 1.7 to two ounces, something like that I read. They do have a wingspan that can be up to 10 uh, centimeters. So, you know, when they're flying around, they look huge, but they're really not. They're just tiny little guys. Um, in some ways they're kind of cute, okay, if you like that kind of thing. But they are absolutely harmless, but they can get into your house occasionally. Now, they usually do so by accident, especially younger little bats. Uh, if they see an open door or an open window, and you know, it's usually just at about dusk time when our eyes aren't that great, but theirs are. And bats are not blind, by the way. They have a very good sense of sight and hearing. So anyways, Tuesday night, we were sitting out underneath the deck, the patio area, which I've told you before is semi-enclosed uh, under there. Keep the bugs out. And um, I guess we must have left this, the door going into the house, the glass doors, open just long enough that something came in. Now, we did not see this something. We didn't see it come in. No, they're fast, okay? And especially at dusk and in the dark, they are just about invisible. So we went to bed that night. At, now, I go to bed relatively early in comparison to Walter. Walter doesn't go to bed till about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So I was peacefully slumbering when suddenly I hear this little girl scream and it's Walter. And I went, what, what? I just thought he just sh got shot, knifed himself, I don't know, broke a leg. No, he opened up the bathroom door to our ensuite bathroom and lo and behold, what was, ha what was in the bathtub? Now, there wasn't any water in the bathtub, but what was in the bathtub? Well, it was a bat, a little brown bat. And he was not happy to see Walter and Walter was not happy to see him. But the thing is, it's a fear factor on both sides. And I didn't want to see him either. So Walter's in there and this thing's flapping around. Now, I got to give credit for Walter. He's, he's very brave, okay? I, I'm not so brave with these things. Although my rational mind says these are little brown bats, they are protected. You can't kill them. They are a protected species here in Canada. They do a lot of good. They eat their body weight practically, or 50% of their body weight in bugs like mosquitoes and things like that. Uh, some of the things I read talking about the prevention of West Nile disease because these bats are great. They're eating up all those uh, mosquitoes. Um, and they don't want to be in your house, no more than you want them in your house. So there he is in the bathtub. He probably was thirsty, the poor little thing. Um, so anyways, we knew from experience, because we've had bats in the house over the years before, uh, to open up a window, get them into a space where there's a window and you can close a door sort of a thing, like a room, and they will eventually find the open window and out they'll go. And that's the end of the problem. And this little guy, true to form, did. Walter, I heard him in there talking to him. He's going, okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Do you want to go out, buddy? We'll let you out. <laughs> talking to it like it's a pet. And, um, and I wouldn't want one as a pet, really, no. Um, so anyways, off he flew. And that was fine. And we thought we were done. Well, okay, the next day we went away uh, for an overnight trip, coming to that. And uh, we got home. This was very early Wednesday morning when we discovered the bat. Okay. Uh, that regular morning, we got up, got ready, and off we went on our little trip. <clears throat> Gone, on at, staying at a hotel Wednesday night. Thursday, we came back. No, sorry. We went, we stayed at the hotel overnight Wednesday night. Came back home. Thir uh, how did this work? 
Uh, okay, I've got my dates all mixed up. It was actually Wednesday night when we had the bat. Um, Thursday morning, we went off on our trip. We came back Friday afternoon. All was well. Okay, went to bed Friday night. In the middle of the, well, wee hours of the morning, I hear this little squeal. It's Walter again. He went into the guest bathroom and guess what was flopping around in there? Now that room doesn't have any windows, but it was bat number two. Well, actually he wasn't flopping around. He was in the toilet face down. The poor little sucker drowned. He, how he got into the toilet, I don't know. Maybe he was trying to get a drink, lost his footing. I don't know, but there he was. Now we're thinking, well, what do we do? So I said, I guess flush them. You really don't want to touch them with your bare hands or anything. Well, Walter had a little stick and he poked it and it's not moving, it's dead. And they're like mice. They don't really have any solid bones. They're made up of cartilage, 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 cartilage. That's the word I want. And they can actually flatten themselves down and get under a, a door crack this, this big, like a quarter to half an inch if they want to. Um, so my father, I remember my father uh, when I was a little kid, we lived in an old farmhouse, 100 year old farmhouse, and we had bats in the summer. And what my dad did in those days, after he got over the initial shock of the first bat coming in, is he'd always sleep at night with, in the summer with a tennis racket beside his bed. Because invertedly, these bats would end up in my parents' bedroom and they'd be swooping around and my dad's job was to get rid of them. And the way my dad got rid of them in those days was he'd just pick up the tennis racket bash them as they came by. Now, it doesn't take much to kill them when you hit them with the force of something like that, you know. Um, I don't know if they were still protected in those days or when they started protecting them, but we didn't think twice of it. It was a bat, it's dead. Um, and then my dad would dispose of the uh, evidence. He'd flush it down the toilet. Did that for years when I was a little kid when we lived in this place out in the country. So I said to Walter, well, flush it. So Walter flushed it. Damn, what do you know? It's swirling around the tank, about to go down the thing, and that thing's alive. We didn't know that. We couldn't save it at that point. I still feel really bad about that. I really do. I mean, I don't want them in my house, but it was not in our intent to... We thought it was dead. So bye-bye bat, burial at sea. So we thought that was probably the end of it. But at this point, when you've had two of them in the house, you get a little paranoid. You start looking around. Now we're trying to figure out how they're getting in the house. Well, we figure that that night we were out on the patio, we probably left the door open just a little too long. It doesn't take long. And they probably actually nest, hang out underneath in our patio because it's dark under there. Um, and at night, there's usually nobody out there to disturb them or anything like that. And yeah, that's probably where they are. And um, bats usually only have one baby a year, sometimes two. And this is the time of the year when the babies have all been born and basically are, you know, growing up and learning the tricks of the trade. But they hang out as a family unit uh, as well. So we figure that these two bats got in when we had that door open. And as I said, you'd think you'd see that happening, but because of the lighting system we had, which is basically really no lights much on at all, and they don't need a lot of time. Like I said, they are extremely fast. They probably came in that way. Then of course, when things in the house went quiet, they tried to get out. Uh, they were looking for an open window or door and there weren't any. So that's why the second bat ended up, and I don't know how this happens, but oftentimes the bats we've had in the past end up in our guest bathroom. Well, they're guests, I guess. So anyways, that poor little devil, you know, met his watery fate. So the next night, now I'm getting a little paranoid and I'm thinking, oh, two, two. Okay, we have had two in the house at the same time before, uh, a long time ago. So the chances are that's probably it. No, it was not. Again, I hear the little girl scream and it's Walter and he went into the guest bathroom and there it was when he turned the light, it's flapping around. Okay, so now we've got this, trying to figure out where, where we're going to direct it because that bathroom is an inner room and it doesn't have any windows. So 
the closest room is the guest bedroom. And so Walter went in there, he opened up the window and we tried to shoo the bat into that room and close the door. Well, eventually we did get him in that room and Walter came out and shut the door. So every few seconds or so, Walter would look in the room and there would be flying around again. And it didn't seem to be finding the window. So finally, Walter went in. He may scream like a little girl, but he's all man. He went into that room and shut the door and I figured that's it, I'll never see him again. The bat will carry him away. Nope, he's in there talking to the bat. I can hear him. He says, no, come on, come on. The window's over here. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Out the window, out the window. <laughs> it was kind of funny to hear. Uh, kind of cute too. Uh, anyways, next thing I hear, I hear Walter dumping stuff out of a box that was in there. There was a box of, um, we have a sort of a, a little dresser in there. It's basically guest room, storage room. We have a big box of uh, Keurig cups that we got at Costco. Walter dumped the cups out all on the bed and he's got this empty box. Now the other way you can get a bat out of your house besides opening doors and windows is you can throw a towel or a blanket or something like that over top of them and then take them outside and let them go. Problem with that is they can get caught because they have little claws on the ends of their wings. They get caught up in that fabric. It's better with a box if you can get them in the box. Well, I guess he lit on the curtains in that bedroom and Walter tried to get him there but he couldn't. The, guy, the little thing went down sort of on the inside of the curtains so Walter sort of knocked the curtains off the window. They're just cafe style kind of curtains and the bat crawled right underneath. The, they fell on the floor. He crawled right underneath them. So Walter's picking up the fabric, the curtains, and he sees them there and he puts the box down on top of them. So got a bat in the box. Now the idea is you take a piece of uh, cardboard, thin cardboard, and you slide it under the box. So it's a lid turned up, you know, hold it down and off you go outside and you let the poor little thing go. And that's what Walter did. Actually, I don't know how he managed it, but he managed to get the flaps of the box <laughs> closed because he didn't have another piece. We have since rectified that problem. So he's got a bat in the box. He takes it out the front doors and lets it go and off it flies on its merry little way. So we close up the windows. I go back to bed, but do I sleep? No. And this is where irrationality comes into mind. And this is me being pissed off with my own reaction to something like this. You know, we're all very brave when we see something like a bat on a horror movie because, you know, it's just a television show on the whole bit. But facing them face to face and even knowing what I already know about this type of bat and how much good they do and how little harm and that they definitely are not a threat to human beings or anything like that, um, I'm still paranoid. So the rest of the night I really did sleep because I'm thinking that's the third bat. We've had three bats in a row. This is bad because now we're trying to backtrack and think where could they be coming from? And I have these visions of a huge hundred thousand bat colony in my attic. Walter's saying he's not sure how they would have got in there. Uh, bats don't tend to dig their own holes. They tend to um, just if they find an opening, opening of opportunity, they will go in there, that kind of thing. But even if they were in our attic, getting into the main house um, I mean, we live in a relatively modern house. It's only 26 years old and it's in great repair, in great, you know, shape. So it's not like we're talking about a dilapidated little place at all. Um, so we couldn't figure out how they would actually get into the house and why would they want to? They want access to the outdoors, especially at night. They only go in at, in the daytime to sleep. They're nocturnal. So I know all this stuff, you know, but I quiver. I get upset. So last night I had the light on in the bedroom. Walter was cutting fabric. Like I said, he doesn't come to bed until about three in the morning. This is now about 10 o'clock at night or so and I'm reading and I'm trying not to go to sleep. That's the irrationality of this whole thing. And I'm looking all the time and I'm listening because I said to Walter, uh, especially with bat number three, I said, I hear something. And he goes, ah, you're hearing things. Turned out, no, I was hearing the bat in the guest bedroom. Um, they don't make a lot of noise, but I have really good hearing. Um, I mean, after all, I was a school teacher. I could hear two kids whispering about what party they were going to, at, and they'd be at the very back of the room and I'm at the front, no problem. So, you know, I hear noises. <laughs> and that just makes me even more paranoid because I'm going, wait, because the house at night makes lots of noises. You don't really realize it until you're actually consciously listening. You know, the fridge turns on, the fridge turns off. 
the, the timbers creak. Uh, we live on a on the edge of a forest, I hear wildlife in the bushes, you know, it comes through, sort of a thing. So there I am, looking around. Anything flying in here? And that's the thing about bats. When they're relaxed and their wings are span or in, they look just like a little cute little mouse. I don't have a fear of mice. I don't like them because I don't like the dirty little varmint in my house, but I don't have any fear of mice. Basically, although technically it's not true, they, I found out, but most people consider bats just little flying mice. But nevertheless, they fly, and there's something about a creature, you know, a rodent or whatever flying that's different than a cute bird, okay? So there I was last night trying to stay awake, but I also wanted to sleep. And I figured, okay, if there's going to be more drama and, and there's a bat in here and Walter's going to be chasing out an open window, I think I want to be comatose. So I had a little sleep aid help. Walter had just uh, busy, uh, recently bought some CBD oil, which is a derivative of marijuana, legal, okay, legal, that we bought because it's legal here in Canada. And this particular strand, it's droplets. You put a couple of drops under your tongue, and it's supposed to help you sleep. Well, I had some of that, didn't seem to put me to sleep. Finally, finally, I decided, okay, this is crazy. I've got to go to sleep. Um, it's now well after midnight or so, but I left the light on. I have not left the light on since I was a little kid, but I left the light on. So anyways, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night uh, because of that. But the good news is, cross my fingers, cross everything. We didn't have another bat last night. First night, three nights basically, no bat. So I'm thinking, that what we had was a family. Um, the reason I think this is because baby bats are prevalent right now, this time of the year. They hang out with their parents for, I think they fully grow in about six weeks or something from what I read. And you know, they hang out as a family unit. And we think the whole damn family <laughs> flew into the house. You know, there's the doors open. They were probably frightened because they were probably living underneath our deck. When we were out there, we're talking. We've got some lights on. We got music going. And the first opportunity they had to get out because I don't know how they get in under there. Well, I told you they can get into little spaces this big. So there is pri sort of a privacy lattice, but it's got fairly large holes in it on part of that patio. So they could easily crawl in through one of those. Or there's another way up underneath sort of the eaves that they can get in there whatever way suddenly they're panicking there's humans out here and they took the first opportunity they could to escape and that first opportunity was probably the open patio door they just want to get away and then they went uh oh we're in a house of course we didn't see them so they went to hide probably down here in the basement and eventually made their way upstairs and then all the drama for us i don't know that's our theory but we especially think the last bat, bat number three, he was not finding the window. And I did read that baby bats, young bats, I guess lack of experience, if you open up a window or a door, if they get into your house, they may not find the window or door. Um, they're not as experienced, I guess. Maybe they panic more because they're younger. I don't know. So this guy definitely, and it's a big window. He definitely had in a small room. He definitely had lots of opportunity to find the window and he wasn't going to it, especially with Walter was directing him this way. The window is this way. Um, so anyways, I hope we don't have any more in the house. If we get more like this and we haven't left anything open and whatnot, now it makes you get, it makes me start to get a little paranoid about, mm, we may have to call in professionals. But I'm hoping that that was what my theory is correct. And I hope that's the end of the bats. So last night I slept okay. But I'm so pissed off with myself because I'm having all these irrational fears. And now I'm going to get a little bit even more serious about this. What this has done to me is put me in a really weird mental mood. And I've been in a really weird mental mood for about two weeks now. Going on two weeks. A lot of it has to do with the condition of my mother, which I haven't spoken to yet today on the vlog, but I will. Um, it's other things too. And last week I hinted at some of those and talked about, you know, my pissy mood and that kind of thing. I, it's Now it's not that I'm in a pissy mood. I'm in an anxious mood, like anxiety. 
I don't usually have anxiety attacks. Now, when I was much younger, I did have panic attacks every now and then. But I don't know. So something's going on here, and I'm just not sure what it is. But anyways, their bats are out of the house, and hopefully it'll stay that way. Okay, so we went away, as I mentioned uh, a little earlier, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But we did go to a quilt store. Actually, this is a quilt store I deal with online, um, although they do have two physical stores. One's located in Newmarket, which isn't that far from us, about an hour away. And another one is down in Burlington. And Burlington is on your way to Niagara Falls, and that's where we had gone to, uh, and on the way home, of course. And so we stopped in because I had seen a line of fabric that online on the store that I really like. So I thought, well, we're here. What the heck? Let's go in and see if I can get some. Unfortunately, I could not get this particular line of fabric. They didn't have it at that store. Now, I could order it online, but long story short, I checked it out with Shirley and she's ordering some at Ultimate Sewing. So problem solved. Do I need more fabric? No, I don't. But while I was in there, I was looking at their Christmas fabrics and I decided to pick up a few. So I got this one. This is more for backgrounds than anything else. And then I saw this. It's maple leaves, Canadian maple leaves pattern. And although this is, they're putting it in with their Christmas section, I guess the colors do suggest Christmas a little bit or winter. You could don't have to use it for a Christmas project. And so I also bought the same pattern, but in this colorway as well. And again, could be used in Christmas, uh, projects but doesn't necessarily have to be so I got two meters of each of those while I was in there um, and as I said I went into ultimate sewing and uh, the fabric that I really liked that pulled me into that store to start with Shirley's going to order so I am going to get some of that because it's really pretty okay um, what else well let's go to the 3d corner shall we and what have I been making well I've got both printers going 24 seven. Uh, yesterday I had a problem with the older of the two printers. It was doing the same problem I had before I figured it out. And I kind of figured, okay, there's two fans. I had re replaced one. The other one I'd left the original fan in. At the time that I replaced one of them, I thought I should be replacing the other one too, but I didn't. And yeah, it was doing the same thing again. So I pulled it apart. I replaced the fan I hadn't replaced before and it works like a dream. That is such an easy thing to fix. Well, it's a little fiddly, but it's so easy to fix. And yet it has a real big bearing on how well your printer is working. So I printed a few things. I was playing again. I'm still looking for or trying to decide what pin cushion designs that I've been making. I'm going to use as Christmas gifts. And, but I saw this, I was looking for more and this is Santa. I did them in rainbow. And uh, he turned out pretty good. Um, I, I can't really make him into a pin cushion. I thought he'd look nice as a pin cushion. But what I might do is make two more. One 50% bigger and another 100% bigger than this one. So they could, you know, home decor for Christmas. Do I need more home decor for Christmas? No. There's a lot of things I don't need, but that doesn't stop me. Um, I did another Tudor house, and this one is now all painted as well. And um, I think this one turned out really nice. I have found that I kind of enjoyed doing the painting on these. I tried to age it a little bit. And um, I think it turned out pretty good. Now, how long does a print like this take? Well, this was printed in four pieces. Bottom part, upper part, and two roof pieces that go together. So it took a couple of days to print. Um, but it's another one to my collection of Tudor homes that I'm making this little Tudor village. Where will I put it? I have no idea. And I'm in my experiment, this is fresh off the uh, printing press this morning, the 3D printer. It's, you know, the famous Easter Island uh, guy, but he's got a hole in his head. It's meant to be a flower pot. Um, I left it at its original dimensions, but I thought because he's got that hole in the head, I can easily put a thing in here and make it into a pin cushion. Now, I'm gonna see how it looks when I make it this size because that's really small, but it might be okay. It might be a good size for it. I might make him a little bigger too, because actually I think he'd make a fun flower pot as well. So I might blow him up real big. 
We'll see what happens. And another pin cushion, Santa's sleigh. Now, this is not a perfect print. There's a lot of gaps under here because I printed this in the wrong orientation. And because of that, um, I didn't have supports. I should have had supports. But anyways, I don't know if I'm going to bother, though, printing another one or not in this. I, this might be too big as a pin cushion. But I thought I'd give it a try and see. So, yep. I've got a whole binder sitting off there that you can't see that's full of all kinds of things that I want to print. So there's no lack of 3D printing. Um, but what my tip for any of you that have a 3D printer, if you are having trouble, a lot of trouble with your um, filament uh, clogging in your, in your nozzle, um, not coming through, it's coming out for a while, but then it stops. And if you notice on your extruder, this is all now 3D printer talk. Sorry for those of you that don't do 3D printing. You can fast forward a little bit if you wish. Um, if you see the sprocket that's pushing your filament into your machine and it's shredding the filament, it's all, and it doesn't seem to be moving, then check your fans. And I found those fans were actually working but they weren't working at the full capacity. And like I've said before, these things seem to be super sensitive. Um, so try replacing your fans. It's not hard to do. The fans, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, they're under $10, I think, for a package of two. So in my particular printer, I have two fans in the Ender 3 version 2. Um, and I think it costs like $10.99 for both fans together. Um, and as I said, it, a little fiddly but not that hard to replace and put in that may make the difference so that's my 3d print tip of the week i know so much about it well i'm learning just like anything practice makes it makes you know experience with there's a saying oh never mind okay so what's coming up next all right so here is um another blast from the past. It's a travel video. It's the second day that we were in Brisbane, March 22nd, 2019. And you get to see sort of the lay of the land in this one. And Brisbane is a beautiful, beautiful city. Highly recommended if you ever go to Australia. Do make sure you check out Brisbane. Okay, so it's our second full day in Brisbane. We're just out in the morning and we're off to, I don't know, we're going to find out where our rental car place is first, how far it gets there in the Maine Science Center. And Walter was adjusting his contact lenses. So we'll see what we see today. Okay, so we're in the City Botanical Gardens again. We were here yesterday, but we've approached it from a different entry point. Because our plan is to take a little walk down to along the riverway. And uh, into Chinatown and some arty places. Well, there's some arty places down there. And maybe we'll loop our way around to the Science Center maybe later today. It all depends where these will take us because we just wander. We don't know where we are. Do we, Walter? Walter says no. And here's a map. And yeah, okay. Well, let's go over here, the lagoons. And these are what your house plants would look like if they had a tropical climate to grow in. And a lagoon. And there's some of our favorite little birds right there. They're everywhere. No idea what they are, but we've never figured that out. Oh, I think we found out last year, but I can't remember. I can't remember what the name were. Lilies. Okay, so for the next little while on this, you may just see shots of the garden here and there. I'm going to pick up my camera every now and then when I see something interesting. And uh, probably won't be a lot of commentary in these parts because, to be honest, I can't walk and talk and take pictures at the same time. I'm afraid I'm going to fall flat on my face. And I don't need that. No, and what's the temperature? So it's 27 degrees. Oh, 
And I wonder what it's supposed to go up to today. So it's supposed to go, it's 27 right now, it's supposed to go to 28 and there's a chance of rain, apparently. This is another part of Brisbane. We took the ferry, the city ferry, which is free, up and around the river. And this end seems to be quieter. A lot of condo-like places here. And this is still all park, walkway. This is probably more a residential area that we're looking at here. Well, of course, residential area for the rich people. Okay, so we're at the Powerhouse Museum. Somewhat like the one we were in Melbourne last it's an year. Old, it's an old uh, power station or whatever, and they converted it to a museum. So we will see what we shall see. Well, we're in the Powerhouse now, but we're not sure what it is. 
It's not a museum. I thought it was. Oh, it's a theater kind of thing. Because yeah. you've got the comedy it's festival. Uh, featuring plays, concert, and other creative shows, plus speaker series. And a lecture chair. Well, we could do lunch, I suppose. Yeah. See what that proud Mary up there has, or whatever. Okay, something a little unusual. We're having rain. It never rains when we're on holidays. So we're here at the powerhouse in a proud Mary little restaurant cafe, having a couple of beers, of course. Because that's what you do when it rains. I don't think it'll last long. It looks like a cloud going over. That's where we are. Where are we? There. Okay. And that's the cell coming through. Yeah. Oh, we well, may be here for two beers. We're at the powerhouse, we're in the bar in it, and it just started to rain, and we decided to hold up here and drink. What else do you do when it's raining? We're all wearing an armband. What? Like a, a purple armband. Oh, well maybe they have something special. Anyways, we're just having a late lunch at a HSW well, pub, which Fallon is attached Brewery. to Fallon Brewery. And it's kind of situated on the bank of the river, one of the banks of the river, and right on the top of this bridge, or underneath this bridge. And we just polished off a pizza, which is the national food of Australia, I swear. But they do make good pizza. And of course, for dessert, Australian pale ale. Say something. Yum, yummy. Oh, okay, that was incredible. Okay, so we are sitting here, just finishing lunch, having a second beer at Felons, which is a local brewery here in Brisbane. And we're having one of their beers. You can see the name on it. We had tried the Australian Pale, and then Walter wanted me to get up, and I had to get up and get a drink. Because when you're here, you have to go up and order everything, and they bring you a number to your table. But as far as beer is concerned, you just pay for it up at the bar and bring it over. So I decided to try. This one that says it's crisp. It's a little lighter than the one we had before. And I kind of, I don't mind it. Walter, of course, poop It's it. okay. But he has no choice because he made me go out and get it. Because fine. apparently I'm the person servant. As you know. So oh, you're paying it on your card. So. Yeah, right. Whatever. And I'm not sure what this button does. I don't know what that button just did. Well, maybe it took a picture. When I do that, it takes a picture while I'm recording. Oh, well, whatever. You're in the dark. You're looking a little dark. Well, did you push the button in the middle to lighten me? No, I didn't. Because I don't know how. Put your finger on the middle of the screen. I'll put a finger Put your you. finger on the middle of the screen. Yeah. A box appears. Yeah. And that should lighten it. You can put it in a dark area. Oh. Look at that! I didn't know that did that. We well, learn something new every day. Really? Well, whatever. So... You might read the instructions. Yeah, I might, but I didn't. So tomorrow we have one more day here in Brisbane. And then on Sunday we get the car and go down to the Gold Coast. I thought we were going up to the Gold Coast, but apparently it's down, not up. And, um... Yeah, so it should be fun. We'll see. Whatever. I have to show you this. Look up. Look up. Well, uh, Rusty the Giraffe and Jerome the Giraffe. No, that was Rusty the Rooster and Jerome the Giraffe. That's it. And this is in downtown Brisbane. Okay, so we're in downtown Brisbane and Walter found this fabric store called Lincraft, which is kind of like a Michael's, a Joann's in our side of the world. And uh, we looked at fabric there, but it's all pretty crappy and, well, quite frankly, very shitty. So we didn't buy anything. But we're looking around here, and I'm about to go to the Japanese store, because I love the Japanese stores, because they have so many exciting things that are cheap. Okay, so that takes us to events in the past week. My mother, as usual, um, I'm, I talked to her on FaceTime this week. She was in bed. 
my sister went over to visit her with uh, my nephew. She was in bed. I haven't had a call in a week about her throwing up. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, but that's all. I don't know anything more. So I'm going over there to physically uh, visit her tomorrow. And my sister will do the FaceTime this week. And then on Sunday, my sister and I have decided that uh, she and the, her kids, possibly her husband if he's not working, and Walter and I, we're going to go over and visit my mother, take some balloons and some cupcakes because it's my mother's birthday on Sunday. Um, I said to my sister, should we bother getting her anything? I mean, there's nothing you can really get her. I mean, anything she ever needs, we make sure she has it. So, you know, there's nothing like clothes or anything like that. Plus... You can't get her like a, a lovely new gown or something because they just don't wear a lot of those kind of things uh, in the nursing home, right? So, um, yeah, uh, we're going to have this little celebration. I suspect my mother will be in bed again. They did have an outbreak of, they gave it a name, a technical name, but basically I looked it up on the internet and it's food poisoning on the first floor. My mother's on the third floor. And a lot of the symptoms to what these people were exhibiting, kind of the symptoms my mother was exhibiting when she was throwing up. And I'm thinking to myself, did my mother get food, a, a touch of food poisoning? Um, it's funny, they never checked her for that. At least if they did, they didn't tell me. So I might be inquiring about that. I may send an email off to the nurse practitioner today and just say, you know, or maybe tomorrow after I've gone and actually seen my mother, maybe I can talk to somebody there and uh, find out more about that. But um, I would have thought they would have checked her for that. But then again, I thought they would have checked her for a yeast infection when I, and I had asked for that. So, yeah, um, it's not a criticism of them and, and the help there. She's getting really good care. But there are some things that might be slipping through the cracks. And I'll just have to make my inquiries and figure this all out. So yeah, we'll go over on Sunday and rah, rah, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And yeah, what more can you do? Okay. So we did go on a trip this week, as I already alluded to earlier. Um, we just want to get away. And uh, so <laughs> when you want to get away, where do you go? Some people might go to Niagara Falls from our area because Niagara Falls is only two hours away. And there's, you know, I call it tacky town. It's always been tacky town because there's a lot of tourist trappy things there and whatnot. But the falls is beautiful this time of the year to see it. If you've never seen it, it is magnificent. Um, but we decided, no, we're not going to Niagara Falls. Although we were curious about what it would be like because our border at that point in time was still closed. So a lot of the people that come to Niagara Falls are Americans, so they can't get in. But the thing is, as of today, they can. The border is open as long as you are double vaxxed and have had a test within 72 hours or something showing that you're negative. You can come in. Americans can come in. We as Canadians cannot go into their country. Now, I'm not squabbling about that. I don't care because I have no desire to travel right now in the States because the States, their um, number of, of infections to that is just out of the roof because you know they have a lot of people in the states who yeah yeah it's all a hoax uh we don't need vaccines and all that kind of stuff and yeah we can talk until we're blue in the face about that woman everybody has so we're not but we have no desire to go there but i just wow i'm having a lot of interruptions you probably won't see these because i'll edit them out but the power just went out that's a good sign isn't it okay bats no power waiting for a guy to fix up my internet yeah okay what was i talking about our trip. So we decided instead of Niagara Falls, we would go to Welland. Now Welland is, you know, right near Niagara Falls. It's where the canal is, the Welland Canal. If you've never heard of it, the Welland Canal has been around for 150 years and it connects Lake Ontario to Lake Erie and it bypasses the falls. So it's a big canal, okay? It's for, you know, ships that ship things and stuff like that. So we had a hotel in Welland. We were there before we could check in sort of thing. So we thought, well, it's lunchtime. Let's go get some lunch and we'll go to Port Colburn. Port Colburn is just about 10 minutes away from Welland. And Port Colburn is on the shores of Lake Erie. So we'd never been there either before. We'd never been to Welland either. So we went to Port Colburn. 
Colburn. Now, Port Colburn, I'm having trouble saying that, is very tiny. It's not a big population. I'm not sure what it is. It's like 20 some thousand, 30 some thousand. I don't know, something like that. So we went downtown and we found a place to have lunch and it had a patio and that's, we can now eat on patios. Still restrictions, but we did that. We had our masks, we were doing everything like what you're supposed to do. And so we had a nice little lunch. And that's about it. We walked through the streets of downtown Port Colburn, which is basically a block or so. Um, nothing there. Can't say I'd run back. So their, their claim to fame is that they're at the end of the Welling Canal. And we did see a big ship going through the canal. Um, it's very relaxing. But don't go there if you're looking for a lot of excitement, okay? Same with Welling. Well, then we went back, checked into our hotel. Nice. Walter always does a good job of picking out hotels. It was a Best Western. Um, it was a suite, uh, an efficiency suite, they call it. So we had a living room, you know, very comfortable living room with a kitchen. The kitchen had a, a, a fridge, a small fridge, a stove top, a microwave, a sink, all that kind of stuff. Um, we had a separate bedroom. Um, very comfortable, king size bed, another TV set in there, everything's air conditioned, very, very nice room. I think it had been recently refurbished, so very fresh, clean looking. They were very, very clean, very, very clean. Even the remote controls Walter was impressed with because these remote controls, all the buttons were flush on the top of it. In other words, no nooks and crannies, uh, so they can wipe them all down properly but we did take our Lysol disinfecting wipes and that and Walter first thing he did when he walked into the hotel room is wipe down the remote controls and everything maybe a little fanatic but I don't think so better safe than sorry it's the new way right um so very nice room and good price including tax $172 for the night um if that had been a the comparable hotel room here in our area and in Toronto that would have been a three to four hundred dollar room uh easily so, you know, there are advantages to staying in small places. Prices can be a little cheaper on accommodation. So anyways, we decided to go down to the falls and check it out. See what it was like without a ton of tourists. Well, there were tourists, but definitely not the volume of people that are usually there because, of course, the border's closed. So the American tourists can't get in until today. Um, so that was interesting to see. I mean, I've seen the, th the, the falls a thousand times, all right? Uh, so we didn't hang out there for too long. We were only in Niagara Falls for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. It took us longer to walk from the parking lot where we parked the car and go down to the falls and then back to the car than anything else. And that's all. We just want to see what it was like when there's not as many people there because we'd never have before. So we went back to the hotel room, chilled out for a while. Oh yes, we had stopped at a, a local winery. This is wine country that we're in as well and one that we'd been to many years before. Uh, we're going to go in and just get a couple of bottles of wine um, for our own personal consumption in the hotel room, so to speak. Um, when we got there, uh, so there were some people coming out. We thought they had been buying something, although they didn't have anything in their hands. And uh, it said it was open. We went in, we sanitized our hands and everything, and the door went to open it. It's locked to get inside, though the sign says it's open. We're thinking, well, I'm looking around. Is there a bell? Is there something we're supposed to do before they let us in kind of a deal? No, no instructions, nothing. We knocked on the door a couple of times because it was late where the inside at the sales part of the winery, uh, but I didn't see anybody. And I thought, well, okay, this is weird. So we started walking back to the car and then a, a lady came out and she says, oh, were you trying to get in? We said, yeah, she says, I'm sorry. She said, I had to go to, I'm only one here and I had to go to the back storage area. And so I, you know, I had to lock the door because of the cash and everything. So, um, Anyways, that was fine. We went in, we got a couple of bottles of wine and went on our merry way. Um, ironically, we never drank the wine while we were away. Uh, we drank one of the bottles of wine when we came home. Um, but um, I'm so used to walk, box wine in a box. Real wine tastes like, ooh, what is this? And then you drink that and you go back to the rest stuff in the box and you go, ooh, what is this? Yeah. So anyways, um, we went out for dinner that night in a place, sort of a pubby place. Actually, it was kind of gross. Um, they didn't have a great selection of stuff. They had a nice patio um, and everything. Walter had some kind of spicy chicken sandwich. I had a um, Reuben and they both came with like a Caesar salad. I, the, the Reuben was huge, too much meat. 
on there, you know. Well, this place was called MT Bellies. Get the pun? It's the letter M, the letter T, Bellies. Empty Bellies. Well, you come out of there, you have a belly, okay? Um, what I have is a little greasy. The Reuben, I don't know, they did something with the bread. I'm not sure what. It, it was tasty and everything. Walter said his was a little, it had some kind of sauce on it that was their own sauce and that. He said it was okay. But it was just really heavy food. And I didn't finish. Well, neither one of us really finished it. Um, that's a rarity. So, um, yeah. So then we went back and watched TV and crashed. And uh, next day, got up. Uh, and off we went and like I said stopped at that quilt store on the way home and came home Okay, so on our little jaunt down to Wellen in the Niagara area. This of course is the uh, wine country down here as you can see all the Vineyards and everything we're stopped here. We haven't been here in a long time. This is Herinder which they make really good wines and we're just going in to, po to pick up a couple of bottles for the weekend. Okay, so that was a bit of a disaster because it says they're opened and we walked in and you can't get in the door and it doesn't seem to be anybody there. So I guess they don't really care about the business. Okay, if you take it back, we were able to get in there and get a couple of bottles of wine. Apparently she had the door locked because she's the only one working in there and she had to move to go to the back part of it. So anyways, yep, no problem. Okay, so we're in Port Colburn, which is not a very big place, but this is part of the Welland Canal, kind of the end of the Welland Canal, where it takes boats to bypass the Niagara Falls and go from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie. So Lake Erie is down there in the distance. Um, so we're here. We've never been here before in our lives before. Might be a good reason why. We haven't figured that out yet, but we're going to go down the main drag here and see if we can find a place to eat, have lunch. Yeah. So we found a place to eat in Port Colburn and this place is called, what's this place called? Canal Side. There's a logo there. And uh, yeah, we're sitting outside and right on the canal. We could have sat across the road if we wanted to. Poor servers, they have to go across the road all the time. Kill. Right. Their specialty is flattened chicken. Okay, so we got our beers and we're drinking. What are we drinking? Canal side. Canal side. Amber. Amber. So that must be a local one. I guess. So tastes like beer to me. Okay, so lunch has arrived. Walter got fish and chips. How right. is it? It's okay. And uh yeah, we got gravy with fries. And I've got a F. Siego cranberry chicken wrap. It's okay, too. It's all right. So this is the Welling Canal at work. Big ship coming through. There are a system of locks further down over that way. And uh, so as I said, they're traveling from Lake Ontario now and into Lake Erie. Sorry. Oh yeah? Ooh, candy supply. There's candies in there. This is where we just had lunch. And we're just wandering the town. It's not huge. So, <clears throat> of course, when you're in Port Colburn, you've got to try the ice cream. And we did. And we'll wouldn't you know it's worth the dairy? It's Quartz Dairy Ice Cream, which is a place more in our neck of the woods. Um, what flavor did you get? Rum raisin. I am, I like rum raisin. I don't like raisins that much, but this, but ra rum. this rum raisin is not very rummy. I got banana in a cup. It is pretty banana. Banana. Okay. Banana. It tastes a lot like banana. It tastes pretty much like vanilla. Oh. Maybe they got mixed up. Maybe they helps drink in the room. So, after lunch and after we walked around Wellen, or uh, Port Colburn, we came back to Wellen where we have our hotel room. And this is a Best Western and it's a suite, as you can see. So this is the general sitting area. 
big television set, lots of lights and What's really nice about these lights, and there's two in the bedroom and some out here, they all have an outlet and they have a USB port as well. I actually brought my little charging tower with me, but don't really need it, but that's nice to know. And then they have this little kitchenette here. So you have a fridge and your sink, a little coffee maker, single cupper, a microwave, and there is a range as well. So, you know, it's not bad. Um, I think it comes with plates and things like that. Yep. And glasses and things. Now there is a note here, extended stay sets, they say. What's that? Um, to maximize use of your kitchenette, the set is available to rent. This set includes a 10 inch pan, two saucepans, colander, mixing bowls, serving utensils, acquired as availability with guest services. Now that's something new because I've never been in a place that's an efficiency where you rent pots and pans. Um, but we don't have any need for those anyways, so that doesn't matter. And yeah, everything else seems pretty much empty. Cutlery, yep. And of course the fridge, as I said. And do we have anything in the fridge? Why, yes we do. The wine that we got at Herinder is in there chilling. So, and the bathroom's in there, but it's occupied right now because Walter's in the bathroom. And this is the bedroom. Nice big king. Good size, good space. I mean, really, how much space do you need when you're only staying one night in a place? But nevertheless, there's a TV in here too, which is nice. So yeah, fairly comfortable for, what did we pay for this? Well, including tax, it was 172. 172, well, that's not out of the way, really, in this day and age. Like actually most, Hotels these days, at least down in our end of the world, are going for three to four hundred dollars a night for nothing. It was one fifty-two plus twenty dollars tax. Hmm. Well, it's not too bad. It's comfortable. It's clean, and they've got all their protocols in place uh, for they all of this. They even have like special remotes that are like that you can wipe down. So, like, yeah. there's no nooks and crannies for it. To... Yeah, and we did bring our wipes with us just on the safe side. So Walter's always wiped down the remote controls and everything like that. I mean, after all, this is the first time we've been in a hotel room in, well, since pre-COVID. So, yeah. Okay, so we've made our way to Niagara Falls just to see what it's like when there aren't any Americans here because, of course, our border is still closed until this coming Monday. And we have never been here when there isn't crowded with American tourists and tourists from all around the world as well. There's still a lot of people here, but nowhere near what you would expect this time of the year at Niagara Falls. This would literally have people all the way across. Falls over there is the American Falls. And we'll get closer to the Horseshoe Falls. The so this is a little better view of the American Falls and the Rainbow Bridge that goes across to Niagara Falls, New York. And here you have Horseshoe Falls. And the Horseshoe Falls again, and if you look down there, you'll see the Maid of the Mist. We have been on that. It takes you right up to the falls. You will get wet. They provide raincoats and things like that, but it is still, you come off that soaking. We've done it a couple of times. It's a bit of a thrill. And this is the famous Skylon Tower. There are several towers here in Niagara Falls. This is the tallest one, I believe. And it's pretty old now. They built this in the early 70s, I think. Possibly the late 60s. Um, it's not that big a thrill. You can go up the top, there's a revolving dining room, but I don't recommend it. It's pretty, pretty bad inside. And there's Walter. Wait to the camera, Walter. Okay, now get out of my shot. All right, you see this on the hill right here? This is where the lights are for shining on the falls at night. They shine all kinds of different colored lights, do a light show on the falls at night here, which is quite pretty. And they do it in the winter as well, when the falls is frozen. Yes, the falls does freeze in the winter time, and it's very, very pretty to see that. And so there you can see people on the uh, ferries that take you up close to the falls, and all those red things are raincoats. They keep you dry. There's another one right there. And this is where they're headed. Into the falls. Well, 
they don't really go into the files. But. And then I had to do something else. My embroidery machine doesn't work great now. Yeah, I know, I hear it in the background. Didn't you just have a whole big problem with an embroidery machine and you've got new machines and everything like that? Yes, I did. This is not the fault of the machine, it's the fault of me, the user. I'm not sure even how I did it. Long story short, I got thread down in the hole where the bobbin winder is. It wrapped around the flywheel mechanism. Now the flywheel will not fly. So I took it into Shirley Friday afternoon. I told, I wrote her an email first, said, okay, you're gonna laugh at this and call me stupid. Um, but anyways, it's in the shop for repair. I probably will get it tail end of this week. I don't know, usually uh, Roy, her technician's pretty fast. It's probably gonna cost me. I don't think there's anything broken. I just think this thread's got really tangled up. That may be a bitch for Roy. So this is gonna cost me. Yeah, I said while it's in there to clean it, tune it up as well. I mean, it's not that old. I haven't had the machine that long, but I have done a lot of work on it. So, you know, you might as well get it clean. Can your machine ever be too clean? No, your machine cannot be. So, and let's see. Yep, waiting for the guy from Bell to show up to put in our new modem. Our neighborhood is now on fiber optics. Bell had this special and we spent a lot of money on internet, but we use it a lot. So, um, like I can justify that. I mean, you know, making these videos and getting them up, you want fast unlimited uh, internet connection. Currently we had high speed, uh, 50 megabytes per second uh, download speed, averaged around 11 to 12 megabytes upload speed. Um, that sounds fast, but it's not as fast as the new one. New one, it's one gig, one gigabyte per second download, 750 megabytes supposedly upload. Now those are the figures they always give you and that always, they tell you uh, at the modem site, your devices, depending on how many you have on at the same time, may get slightly less speed. So we'll see how this works out. But I'm expecting that when I go to upload this video today to YouTube, it usually takes for one of my vlogs an hour and a half to two hours to upload it to YouTube. Let's see if this makes a difference. This will be the test today. So yeah, I don't know how long this guy is going to be, how long it's going to take him to do all this stuff, but yeah. And then after that, I think we're going to cancel our landline. Uh, we don't use it. We use our cell phones all the time. Uh, Walter wanted to cancel it a long time ago. I wouldn't let him because there's something about, you know, letting go of that piece of technology, which means you're committed now totally to your cell phone. But more and more over the past year, two years, I, when someone asks me for my phone number, I give them my cell number. And all we get for calls on the landline are people who want to clean your ducks or scam you out of money. So I really don't need that. And we're paying probably about 60 bucks or slightly more a month for the landline with all the additional services, you know, like voicemail, call waiting, whatever, that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's money I can put towards our new high speed internet kind of a deal. But we're not going to do that until after we see how this internet connection works. And then I'll make the arrangements. If you give Bell too many tasks to do at once in your house, something will get screwed up, I have found from the past. Okay, so, yeah. And I already talked about the bad attack. So that's about all that went on this past week. So tomorrow, off to visit mom, hoping that I find her not in her bed, but I think she will be. What can I do? Anyways, I've talked about that. And, uh, then on Sunday, we go and see her again for her birthday. And yeah, that's about it this week. Uh, Walter has a special event. I think he's uh, the people he sews with online, his uh, sewing classes. The guy who runs those classes is having a barbecue and he's invited them all over. They didn't invite the spouses though. Fine, I'll just find something dead and covered in green crap in the back of the fridge to eat for dinner <laughs> without. So, um, yeah, that, he's got that coming up and yeah, that's life. So anyways, I'm going to go here. The guy has not shown up yet. It's 828. So hopefully he shows up shortly and we get my new internet all up and running. So I'll talk to you next week. Check out uh, Stephen and Walter live. If you haven't already, check out the idiot quilter. So chatty and I hope you have a good week and we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.